Hello ladies and gents, Hello, ladies it's gents. Snake here, Jack and Patrick. There will be spoilers in this impressions of Star Wars The Last Jedi. We're just out of The Last Jedi and we haven't discussed pretty much anything yet. And to open with, before we open into spoilers and go mad, I want in three words or less your impression of the movie what you thought of the movie fanny fucking tastic fanny fucking tastic okay well um, what i think was absolutely fucking brilliant so it was are three word it reviews. was uh, it was out fucking standing yeah. wasn't it and now ladies and gents there will be spoilers oh let me tell you boy <laughs> like fucking crazy after this no spoiler one i'd like to start with and okay be wait but just so you know just so you know yeah we are currently in my car so there may be car noises as we are having this conversation. Which will be fine. Down the road. Which hopefully will be fine with all you listeners. Right. So where I'll to start? Like, where to fucking well, start? I'll tell you now, right? The first thing, my heart is going. Ben Solo, by right? He nearly <laughs> turned me onto his side. Oh, he was right. good. He was good. He, there was a great fight that was good. Yes, let them laugh and yeah. the light flow through you. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, and you could see the heartbreak in her eyes open. Please, please don't do this. Don't do this, Ben. And he fucking did it, like. To, to set it up a little, ladies and gents, if you haven't seen it yet, or if you have seen it, I'm sure you know, that the film starts... This is what I really like, because yeah. this is what the film does throughout the whole, the whole entire film. The film is not a Star Wars film like any Star Wars film you've no. ever seen. It is completely new, completely different, and it surpassed my expectations on every turn. Is it better than Seven? Yes, better well, than I'd Seven. I'd agree with that. Absolutely well. better than Seven, yeah. yeah. And Mirrors the way, of the old, but brand new. But the way they set it up, and they do this throughout the whole film, the opening text, the opening text, the title yeah. crawl, goes through all the rigmarole of the usual. It basically sets up Hot straight away. It oh, sets totally. up Empire yeah. straight away. Yeah. So you're thinking. I remember at the very start of the movie when I read the last line of text, which was something like, "And the um, the rebels are now running for escape." Or yeah. so wasn't yeah. it something like that? They're now on their way running for escape. I literally, Patrick turned to me and said, "That's fucking hot." Like, <laughs> literally, and I was just going, oh, "They're not going to just make Empire again, are they?" But then it opens straight away, and it's a fucking space battle. It's not. Mm. We're not on yeah. Hoth. We're yeah. on the the rebels are literally on the run. For the whole movie, they're fucking so on good. the run. It was such a good and movie. And it's tense, like, because you you want them to escape, and their ships are being taken down. The whole movie, the rebels, the main rebels, are on the run, and <laughs> they just it's just turning all your expectations on the side. You were pulling, away. you were pulled left and right, oh. up, down, up your ass for the oh. whole movie. Oh. Such and, a good movie, and that's why it's unlike any Star Wars movie, I think. That you'll ever see Absolutely I'd completely agree with you Mark Hamill was fucking outstanding He was phenomenal yeah Outstanding He um, was phenomenal Days really was, uh, The whole movie was fucking What a movie To be honest right If I'm going to be no, or Deadly honest, nitpicking, nitpicking. I, I'm not even nitpicking Right I am going From the very start Because the tone It sets Is so unbelievably different From every start Oh absolutely movie, That I was a bit unsure For the first maybe 15 to 20 minutes of the yeah, movie yeah. especially when the whole when we finally get to get the what, what would you call it the 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 tanks or the finish off of the scene between the payoff, like. the payoff scene between Ray and Mark when she's holding out the lightsaber like as you described it it starts off where he gets the lightsaber off Ray yeah. he looks at it for a second and then as you were saying it's like Luke has kind of become a little more Mark Hamill. He is like. And there was a little bit of a comedy moment where he just chucks yeah. his dad's lightsaber over his shoulder it, and doesn't really give a fuck about it. It feels it feels like the people writing it are very very good at writing in the sense that they they are totally researching what fans are saying online. Who predicted that? 
No one. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. No one would go. Oh, Luke is going to take lightsaber and fuck it off behind with his back. Yeah. yeah he no one. Off the so it, like they, they must have been reading, going, okay, all these possibilities, what people are thinking going to happen. They'll go, nah, we'll go fucking mental. Yeah, and that's what they did. And it the worked. Movie. Yeah, and it, it worked. It worked so well. That one about Leia fucking flying through. The, Leia was what? Superman. I all right. Said, I actually nearly said cry. <laughs> 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 Me too. It was well Me off. <laughs> Me at that too. Scene because I, you know the way they set it up. They. they and they keep setting up all the usual cliches and, and they, they break them go, down then they just go well that cliche is gone come back they go yeah here's the cliche Literally, the fooled cliche, you buddy the cliche was and it was towards the start of the movie the rebels are on the run they're in their main cruiser getting away and mm. the em- well the, sorry the new order I'll just we we'll probably go the, the empire as well but the new order are the hot <laughs> on their tail they're tracking them all the time and literally there's a scene where Kylo Ren gets in a ship flies around with a couple of TIE mm. fighter bombers with him and they bomb the cruiser and they hit the fucking main control room yeah. and Leia flies out and it's like this tiny it's literally like 30 second less yeah. scene about 20 second scene and they don't, they just go away from it straight away oh did you and yeah yeah I was just going that is the cheapest because that's what I predicted like, and that's what you said earlier I said yeah. oh they'll give Leia I, I mean like when it happened I was literally like thinking in my head going right could, am I the fucking the psychic of Star Wars or something but also like I'm, as I'm sure you thought as well what a cheap debt she oh yeah deserve that like and they don't even talk about it they just go on to the next thing I'm sure they cut back to like uh, fucking Ray and yeah. uh, fucking Luke on the island and at that stage we're like yeah great just fucking what about Leia like they fooled us and they absolutely fool you because Brilliant. she kind of like Basically shows that she has force powers. She is Superman, and she fucking flew through fucking space. And she was so elegant. Into the door, oh, was bo- and was she gorgeous. looked frosty. Yeah, there was the frost of the space, and she looked fucking, as you said, so elegant. And it was just, it was like pitch perfect. I think exactly what fans I, wanted. I think from that. Carrie Fisher, I think like. that scene was the closest I'll ever have to uh, a religious discovery in my entire life. <laughs> yeah. It was it was so religious, it was like, wasn't it? It was like a messiah. It was religious <laughs> It was fabulous though. It really was. Oh. And I, I was welling up like as it was happening. I thought She's it was a wondrous woman. Excellent. Wondrous yeah, woman. And it's so sad obviously that she's no not with us anymore but I just every step of the way the movie was like, here's the setup. Goodbye! Oh, and I loved it. And I kept fooling. Every, kept, everyone kept fooling me. Oh, like, when the lights had went through Luke, oh, and I was going, oh, don't, don't do an Obi Wan on this. That was the one gripe I had with Obi Wan. He used the same fucking line and everything. If you will strike me down yeah. now, I'll be more yeah. powerful than ever. I, 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 I thought I saw was you some kind of thing. Oh. The, the breath being left from your lungs. <laughs> Please, Luke, don't, I, don't I, be I so know. foolish. <laughs> But uh, I think every man in Ireland loves Luke Skywalker. Uh, Luke Skywalker was fantastic. He's the best man, like. But uh, going into that scene, I knew there was something fishy up straight away, and I'm sure you probably caught it as well. Like the um, lightsaber had been split in two. And yeah, he, and when he I had s- that one, I spotted that he had Anakin's lightsaber straight away. Sorry, Tig, we're cutting all over the fucking place. There was a scene where Anakin's uh, lightsaber uh, between Rey and Kylo were force pulling it. Towards yeah. each other And they literally split The lightsaber in two And that scene happened And then a few scenes later Luke is basically Having a battle We'll call it One on one battle While everybody's watching the, mm. the New Order Are watching from their Fucking machinery And the lads are watching From inside the The cave at the very end And there's this battle Going on And then From the moment He stepped out now we were thinking Oh yeah he's fucking Giving himself a shave Because he's long Because he looked Fucking well He looked very well but I noticed the saber straight away and I was going, mm. where in God's name did that come from? Like, And I, I was thinking in the back of my head, maybe maybe there's some weird thing where he came with uh, Ray on the Millennium Falcon or something like that. Because at first when I saw the lightsaber, I thought the exact same thing. I was going, hold on a fucking second. Oh, am I missing 30 seconds of the movie here? But um, I'm a little bit confused, I'll be honest. I've never seen in a extended, extended lore games or Star Wars where... Someone can do what Luke did. Like oh, normally, yeah, yeah. normally it's Jedi in your physical body, yeah, or it's yeah, become yeah. a Force ghost. But he almost became a, a living spirit, and then gave himself to the Force. Force. It was very I, fucking yeah, so weird. Look straight away, a huge spoiler. Luke basically dies in this movie at the very, but, very but end. It, but it's not. It's not a Han Solo kind of death. It's yeah, he it's, willingly gives himself to the Force. Yeah, he went out in his own terms. 
to kind of set up that scene a little more, the fight between Kylo and him. Basically, it's like Luke is projecting himself onto the battlefield, like an apparition of himself, and he's like, he's way back in his island, sitting down, well, not sitting down, floating above the ground, yeah. doing his force thing, and he's like projecting his image to the battlefield to have a fight, and there, mm. there's the whole scene, like we were saying, where uh, he does the whole Obi-Wan shtick, I'm gonna fucking give myself for the force and I'll become more powerful than you ever imagined, shite. And then Kylo runs at him and slices him in two, essentially. Mm. And uh, I thought that was it, like... Yeah, we were, you know, we were kind of fucking fooled for the moment. Again, like, oh, fucking Luke is dead now and it gives us even more reason to hate Kylo Ren. Um, and then it shows that he's actually projecting his spirit and he kind of, you know, has the upper hand on Kylo. It was just, re- it, again, as you said, it wasn't like something you've ever seen mm. in Star Wars before, or extended lore, or extended universe. It was so bizarre. The whole movie was bizarre it in was. a good way. It was. It, it felt at some points quite fan fictiony, but it wasn't cheap fan yeah, fiction. Yeah, it was good. It, it was, was almost good like fiction, they man. wanted it to be as good as possible for the fans. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, the fucking also the death of um, fucking Snoke. Out that of nowhere, was outstanding. I was just shocked. Like he is nowhere near as powerful as Sidious. Like yeah, just absolutely fucking. Struck and down like it no was great. Bother. It was great, and you see, there's there's this whole stick in the movie as well, where like yeah, Kylo and, oh, just and Ray, good, like Kylo and Ray are kind of having this bit where Ray is kind of trying to turn Kylo, and Kylo kind of shows, or rather, as you were saying, kind of like pretends as if he's yeah. going good, and you you kind of feel for a moment, you feel for him, and you're like. I kind of want fucking Kylo to go good now. Oh, I did. And I, 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 I really wanted him to do that. And I, I kind of had faith in him. And I was going, oh my God, this is going to be fucking something else. Like, yeah, yeah. imagine Darth Maul coming back for the third one. Something like that. And it's the two Jedis against them now again. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was excited. Um, I want to propose a little segment of this little video or whatever it may be uh, of my two most David Lynchian moments. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One... I can certainly think of one. I, 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 I think we're going to share the second one, right? One, uh, no, I'll tell the other one first. The first lynching moment was when Ray fell through that hole. Absolutely. And it was all the clicking and stuff. And I was literally like, this is... You were is just waiting for... Ba-dum, 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 yeah. Ba-dum, ba-dum. And she kind of had an inner monologue going on as yeah. well. It was so fucking unusual. So that was moment one. Yeah, absolutely. Agree. Moment two was quite obviously fucking Diane... Oh right. yeah, Diana. <laughs> Diane, yeah, right. With her fucking pink hair. Yeah, as well, like. right. So that was another fucking outstanding. Uh, Linda, moment. I can't remember her name. The, the actor actress's Diane. name is uh, Linda something. I can't think of like not Linda Ronstadt. She's a singer. Linda something. Uh, Lim- Linda Hamil- Hamilton. Maybe. Ooh. <laughs> That's a cop on the road. Yeah, we're driving. I'm driving a car while trying to do this. Anyway, yes, but Diane from Twin Peaks was in um, the movie. So those are my two Twin Peaks moments. She was absolutely David Lynch. Yeah, I agree with the first. Anyway, that fucking whole mirror. Ray it was brilliant. Into the mirror it was brilliant. Thing was so strange. It was so. So, I, so strange. What, what I like about it as well is Star Wars is a very mainstream franchise, right? Absolutely. But yeah. when it does. Th- but that's not its fault. Right, that, that it's just it's just that good. It appeals to many people. What I'm saying is, for something that mainstream, to do so many weird things, gave me hope. 2017, as I stated in a dusk video, is the year of the weird. Like it's a bit. It, I think it has been a fantastic year, year of weird tones, weird, eclectic things. That to me was like. In our predictions, I was talking about how I wanted it to go yeah. away from the norm. Yeah. And on every fucking... In every state, it went away from the norm. Could you have predicted Snoke being killed? Not at all. Not at all. Like, when Snoke was killed and they were, like, having a fucking... They were I like, believe it, They right? were, like, having a happy moment. We're fucking all alive. We're fucking yeah. fighting. Kylo and fucking Ray fighting together. Fucking, Great fight scene, by oh, the way. Amazing fight scene. Ripping to shreds the fucking uh, uh, Snoke's... Well. Uh, the guards, Royal Empire the Guards. Ro- the Royal fucking New Order Guards, right? Ripping them apart. You were like... What the fuck are they going to do with the series now? Who's yeah. the bad guy? Like, yeah. <laughs> but that, I, but that's what actually it's quite interesting as well, right? Is I remember before in the, in, the, in I would say the first movie in Seven, um, where they said they needed 
um, Kylo Ren to kill Han Solo because they needed people to be invested in him. Oh, one hundred percent. And they always, Darth Vader always wanted to be above the Emperor. Yeah. Right. And now it's finally and happened. Zach, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he thinks, or not, not thinks, but wants to be Vader. <laughs> his equivalent to Sidious is now completely gone. Yeah. Who. Who, right, his force powers looked to me as strong, if not stronger, than Sidious in some points. Oh, yeah. With yeah. the complete, complete. But he didn't the have way this, he was taken he, down. He didn't have the sense, the same, like, sense of. Yeah. Do you know what Sidious kind of knows? According to the plans that I have mm. desired, it, like, he knows everything that's going on, whereas Snoke was yeah. tricked. By and, what, Kylo Ren. Yeah, and what an out of the box way to kill him! Such an interesting. Well, no striking. Oh, I'm going to turn the lightsaber and set it on next to him. Uh, so that was so uh, weird. So the, so the idea how they set it up is, and it's a fantastic scene from Great start scene. to finish. The room was amazing. To, oh, brilliant! The red room, like totally Doom. Twin Peaks as well. Like, Doom. oh my god. Every fucking step of the way, it's just Twin Peaks, Twin Peaks, Twin Now, Peaks, Twin George, I know you're nothing to do with the movie, but let me tell you, I am so glad it wasn't a normal movie. I'm, really I'm so gagged. glad they didn't just go, hear the boring answers. Like, it, wait, no, wait, no. That scene, they set it up, right? A fantastic scene. And Snoke is really intimidating. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's an great. intimidating character. He's not, like, Sidious is kind of more, well, how would you, he's not, like, necessarily. He's a stealth character, kind of. Yeah, he's not necessarily, like, fucking, uh, would make you feel uh, smaller. Mm. Or something like that, you know, like he's not necessarily like a big muscly guy coming in making you feel yeah. uneasy. He's more like menacing. Yeah. But is, Snoke yeah. was very Crafty. like he was very much so a uh, character that made you feel like he was very powerful. Yeah, power a lot more in your face. Powerful. In your face, yeah, definitely. But how they set the scene up anyway is Ray is obviously on the on her uh, basically made go on her knees by Snoke's force powers and uh, Kyler he basically then is doing the whole oh, the usual to kill him. you need to now kill her to prove you are evil yeah. to me kind the of usual thing. bullshit the usual uh, fucking Star Wars thing and Kylo then pulls out his lightsaber what he's doing with one of his hands kind of behind his back is there's a uh, Anakin's lightsaber is next to Snoke because he took it off Rey when she comes in and what he's doing is he's kind of like pointing his lightsaber down and Snoke is closing his eyes towards Rey his own uh, Kylo Ren is pointing his own lightsaber down and Snoke is closing his eyes and he's like yes yes I can see you are pointing the lightsaber towards or kind of thing <laughs> that's a little more over the top and expressive than what actually happened he was the worst sit lord in the whole world he was so <laughs> fucking shit but uh, the the light, then he's turning Anakin's lightsaber at the same time he's kind of pointing it down towards Snoke so what mm. the whole idea is he's going to kill Snoke with Anakin's uh, lightsaber what an interesting way like that's so out of the box right? it's just so out of the box like, like fucking who could that. that now turn on the lightsaber yeah. to strike down your true enemy and, it's, and it was him that was the enemy so yeah. he struck him down Oh, he got and chumps he was, dead and he deserved it. I, I loved as well. It was when he brought the lightsaber towards him and it halved yeah, him. He fucking, he's, it's like in oh. his side from the chair, if you can imagine. It was so good. And then he just fucking does the force pull of the lightsaber and he just slices him in half. It was oh. fucking brilliant. Oh, fucking brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Now, the fucking next thing we need to talk about. Leia had so many moments where you thought she was going to die in the movie. Oh, Leia. Obviously, the first one where she gets blown out of the bridge, we've already talked about that. Then you don't know if she's going to wake up, and I was thinking in my head, are they just going to have her on ice, that, basically, yeah, for the rest of the series? Yeah, that's what I thought. I was going, that's it, no, she's going to be alive, but comatose. Yeah, she's going to be comatose for the rest of the they series. They plenty of shots of that. They fucking something. didn't do that. They, she rose from the fucking... Or she, went, she took charge again. Keeping her alive was very brave on their part. It was hugely fucking brave. What, what are they going to do? And, of course... Then when they're at the last, the base, the base they go to, which is actually extremely like hot, but it's not hot. And the trench warfare. And the trench warfare. Oh, was it was it, it was so what of, like the, this this movie. Fair enough, it being Star Wars, but as I was saying, I don't know if I've said it on this thing already, but it was the most like like if you take the team or the title of Star Wars out of it, in general, it was just a great great sci-fi movie. One hundred percent, yeah. Definitely, and that that that's a testament to itself. No, add the name Star Wars to it, and you have a fucking crock of gold. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So you think she's gonna die on the hot planet, um, yeah. which had salt rather than snow? That was a very that interesting thing. thing, and it brought out the red sandstone under it, which kind of looked like blood at the end. It was yeah. really kind of. Those ships cool. were very weird. 
those rusty ships and with the, with the thing that was etched in the ground yeah, 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 yeah it was very strange that, very weird how would you describe them to the yeah. viewer who hasn't seen it yet to for some they, reason is watching they, a spoiler filled they, <laughs> video on Star Wars they flew the way a chicken runs yeah that's okay, the best I can, way I can describe I can, it I can, I can see what you mean that that man was also in Star Wars there's a man he was, he was, was in a Star Wars bucket was. yes but the way we got lovely uh, if we haven't said it already lovely Star Wars um Popcorn buckets that look like little trinkets, little bins, and uh, a really beautiful cup as well. So that was fucking very cool. Yeah. So they're in the hot planet, and Leia, you think she's gonna die there when they fire the laser, but she didn't die, and then yeah. she continues on. And they kept her alive. She's still alive for the next movie. Very brave. What in God's name? How, like, have they filmed the stuff that they need for the next movie? I, Did they refilm stuff for this movie? Was was she supposed to die all along? Like, I have a feeling what happened was that she completely filmed all her stuff for this movie. And I have a feeling that for the third movie they're going to struggle because they only have maybe half, maybe a quarter of the shots that they need for it. Maybe. But I think they might pull it off and maybe kill her now in the next one. I thought she was going to die this one and I think you did as well. Absolutely. Because it, it only like, made sense. It would have made sense and I was just wondering, for the whole movie I was like, how can they kill her without it being cheap? And we thought we got that. I was it, straight away, like 20, 10 minutes into the movie, we thought we got the cheap death. And I was going, I literally, my mouth was open going, they're not going to just fucking, they're not going to sweep her under the rug like that, are they? Bye, baby. Um, but that was a gorgeous scene, as we've already talked about. Just fucking Superman Leia. But, uh, yeah, fucking what? How are they going to, like, if they have a few scenes, fine, but are they going to kill her? Are they going to keep her on? Is she going to become a force ghost as well? Um... Yoda as well that, turned up. Oh. that was lovely That was such a lovely <laughs> That was a lovely scene Like Good it was um, That was good yeah Yeah Yoda, Yoda turned up Which was just like Out of the blue That kind was of a bit thing. surreal And he literally Yeah cause You know Yoda Yoda hasn't really Properly featured In the way that he featured In this movie Since The return of the Jedi That's like. true Like yeah uh, Like he hasn't returned In that Slightly hermit crazy Yoda mm. That's a force ghost. That's the thing you reminded me of. I did you think Luke was? I thought kind of, yeah, I thought he yeah, she, he yeah. was doing the test. Yeah. Mm, quite a bit of As, Absolutely, I was thinking because I was looking at her go out. He was like go away from that stuff, and I was like, has come he, here in a whole lot of seconds there, nobody. All right. Has he become more crazy than Obi Wan was yeah. in the fucking original movie? Um, Mental. Yeah, I know. I thought the exact same thing, and I was going to bring it up after the Yoda thing as well, but. Uh, yeah, the the whole scenes between Ray and Luke at the start are very, very reminiscent of the scenes between Luke and Yoda where the master has, because he's been on his own for such a long time, mm. he's come a bit crazy. And that's why I was like, oh, they're getting away with all the him chucking lightsabers off the side of the cliff and him kind of doing all yeah. like... Not wanting to talk and then fucking snapping her with a fucking thing. Oh, that, that was very funny. fucking leap. <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> um, very Mark Hamill. Oh yeah. And that was the thing. It was. It was like it, we weren't like we were obviously watching Luke Skywalker. Yeah. But it was a very Mark Hamillized Luke Skywalker. It felt like they came in and went right, Mark. What do you want to add to the character? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And he went, right, I'm going to do this within reason, have free reign. And I think he did a great job. He's 100% coming back in the next movie as a Force Ghost. Though. Oh, 100%, yeah, that's yeah, obvious. He so he's back. not going to be gone, gone. Yes, but so he's, he's not gone, gone, gone but his physical body is gone. Which is, I think he went out on a high rather than on... On his on, own terms. Like, like he was on his own. Yeah, definitely on his own terms. He kind of had a sense of grace about him at the end as well. And... The whole binary sunset thing at the end where he's sitting on the rock and he's looking across and you've got the binary sunset piece of music as well, which was, dare I say, overused in the movie a little. <laughs> and they used Leia's theme about two or three times. Yeah, yeah, Only yeah. one of them, though, was used beautifully. Um, which what movie? I, it was the, I think it was the scene where she was sitting down talking to Poe. It was actually towards the end and there was a theme came on and it was just... It nailed it like it yeah, being heard. Yeah, yeah. My heartstrings were being tugged a lot. Uh, the whole movie and it was the cinema itself was so warm, like the temperature was warm that if you were sitting there in a t-shirt and mm. uh, and and shorts, you'd be warm, right? But imagine now you're in a cinema. It's packed to the fucking gills. It's warm already, <laughs> and the whole movie is constantly making your heart yeah. jump. Like the whole movie, there should the, when the. Ships were trying to escape down to the planet. You were like, yeah, Leia's dead there. They're going to kill her there. <laughs> yeah, it was constant. Yeah. Like, they were showing, like, they wanted to kill Leia all the time. 
But they never did. Let's leave Leia out of this. <laughs> yeah, it, she's fine. It was it was very very interesting. But like that hot cinema, that, that was one of the main only downfalls. Nitpicking literally about the whole night. I thought the whole night was great. The movie was fucking fantastic. Yeah, the movie was um, bad. But I thought was was very funny was um, that scene where he's driving towards the big cannon thing. Yeah, yeah. Sweating, and I was thinking, <laughs> I know how you feel, buddy. I'm yeah, like yeah. right there. This cannon at the end firing through a big massive steel door. Um, from the New Order to the, they were destroying the Rebel base at the very, very end. And uh, yeah, it kind of like the red sand and the hot fucking laser, the beam that was pointed at Finn. Yeah. And he's driving down, he's sweating his balls oh. off. like <laughs> He literally was like a pool of sweat. Yeah, yeah. Those scenes were weird as well, weren't they? Finn and Rose going off on a little adventure to fucking yeah. uh, this rich casino world that looked very reminiscent of something out of the prequel trilogy. I thought it would remind me a bit like James Bond. <laughs> like a bit like Casino Royale. And I was okay. going, what is going on here? <laughs> Like, yeah, I, I got a I got a prequel vibe off it and not a bad prequel vibe. I know a lot of people don't like them, but um I got a kind of good prequel mm, vibe off the mm. whole thing. It was like what the pod racing could have yeah. been kind of. Yeah. Pod racing's cool, but like the whole you know, you the the minor children that were like the yeah. guy at the very end there that's potentially a Jedi I thought they were well. gonna help them escape as well, and they just fucking left him there. Just left him there, yeah, yeah. They just told him fuck they gave him a ring and told him fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a ring. We're gonna steal all your animals. Goodbye. Nice one. <laughs> they were later later severely beaten. Yeah, that last scene was weird. Do you think the last scene was more a thing like, oh, there are plenty of people in the in the galaxy that have force powers and they'll come out as the new Jedi Order comes back um, with with Rey at the helm? Or do you think it was more that this kid was specifically um Well special? I don't know if you noticed, did you see the what he did with the brush? Oh yeah, pulled it out like a lightsaber, like No no no, he didn't do the lightsaber when he walked out of that room into that little garage. Oh yeah, space. he pulled it up with the force powers. Yeah. But oh yeah, Jedi straight away. Like straight that's away. what I was talking about, what I mean. Um but what I mean is uh, do you think that the intention of the filmmakers was to say that there is sparks in anybody, no matter how small or big they are across the galaxy. Or do you think this one particular kid, because no, there's a I kid think... at the end, uh, basically is what we're talking about, and that ended the film. Do you think he's special, or do you think it's just more a broader macro picture? No, yeah, I think he's special, but in a broader macro picture, I think that. Um, like, do you think that specific kid will come back? Like, I think what that one child was symbolizing was, was the was macro, the, just yeah, the yeah. Republic, and everything's going to be okay. Yeah, Fair yeah. enough. A Jedi the like Luke died, return, but. Yeah. There will always be four sensitive people. Yeah, the Jedi's will return kind of a situation. Very so good. will this next movie be called Return of the Jedi again? <laughs> Revenge of the Jedi! <laughs> the re-return of the Jedi. <laughs> the re -re -re return of the Jedi. Uh, Captain Phasma? Yeah, she... We saw her eye. She, but she also kind of got like... Shafted? Yeah, she got shafted in terms of her role again. She was shafted in the first film as well. She had about I, five lines. Poe got a nice lot of fuck. He got proper... Poe was right in the character he should have been to in the first one. Yeah, he got way more time than he, he uh, got in the, fir uh, the first film. Seven, sorry. When we're, we're talking about this trilogy. Yeah, this is the second one in this trilogy. Uh, so, so uh, this yeah, yeah. In the first one of this trilogy, Poe didn't really get much... To do with dialogue, so it was uh, hard he was, to build we, character. He was, um, but we, even from then, we still liked him. No, absolutely, because he was an energetic yeah. and fun character. Yeah. Whereas the, they gave him loads of screen time, which was great because it really got to flesh out him as a character, and he was an enjoyable character. But Phasma got shafted again. Yeah. She got about two scenes, and in the second scene, she died. I think that even like she had less scenes in this movie, but I think in the first movie, even though she had maybe about three, four, five scenes. Um, she had about she was, two lines of dialogue. Yeah, yeah, but she was a lot more memorable in the first, in the first, in the oh, definitely, first Awakens. Definitely, because it was kind of like a, it was a little shoehorned in, mm. if you understand my meaning, as in like, oh, yeah, oh she's a character from the first yeah. movie, and then about it was maybe three quarters way through the movie, she they were just like through the smoke. Oh, it's Captain Phasma. And she got about two scenes. <laughs> and in the second scene, she died. I also think that... So she got shafted. In yeah. that scene, it was a nice little fight scene. In or this like scene. You are eat love. <laughs> but there's these... in it, the, Like the last movie and this movie, there's mm. these kind of... The only thing way I can describe them is like henchmen, laser sort things, batons, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, you hold it really weird. And it just you kind of hold it like like a police like bat, bat on, a police like. bat on, yeah. But to me, it looks really awkward to fight with. No, fair enough. He might have a bit of training because he was one of them. But I don't, I don't know if he used them or not. It just 
she was using like this fucking just metal pole. Yes, yeah, and then he was using spear. a fucking electric bat. She was like. using a javelin, a <laughs> literally a javelin, <laughs> like yeah. very fucking weird. Yeah, it was an odd kind of final battle, and it was very short. It was like fell to the floor. It like. literally a five minute battle, yeah. if less. Finn got knocked down, and then he rose up on a platform and hit her into the fucking depths of her. Her, her death like and that yeah he went hey or something like that and then smashed her in the yeah face. it was very strange I didn't like that bit it was a bit strange alright um, I just thought that she got shafted and I think she got shafted in the first movie as well I think they built her up as a great character and she could have been very very good like she yeah. could have had more scenes with she could have been a- and she could have been kind of the other in command to fucking Kylo Ren and smoke I f- like I felt like she could have been the brand new uh, Boba Fett Oh, definitely, yeah. What and she, she, had her, she had the costume for it. That fucking costume was amazing. Great, yeah, great costume. And she was imposing, like she had a kind of in, a, imposition. She's a great her. actress. But she just got, I think, shafted in terms of the role. Now, in fairness, they were trying to probably tell as much as they could within a two and a half hour um, film. Two and a half hours long. It's the longest uh, Star Wars film up to date as well. Which it, is it, great. it felt that long, it but, n- long. but not. In, in a oh I can't wait to get out of here way yeah. the, the heat was the only the thing the heat was the thing that was but, not helping like I yet. wish I had a hand fan with me or something like that <laughs> <laughs> I would have been like oh! the lord of pleasure like <laughs> in this scene I am sweating <laughs> but um, <laughs> imagine oh god excuse me do you want to borrow my hand fan <laughs> but uh, yeah like it was just it felt that long but it was really really good and totally entertaining like there was like there was some moments where I was so engrossed in the movie, I I was forgetting to eat popcorn <laughs> and forget having to drink, even though my lips were burning from salt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Grand, look, I, I've actually think I've got something something good to end it on. Two things to end it on. Two. Um, I suppose first we'll talk about the parentage of Ray. Still a mystery. They they talk about it briefly in the film. They say it's that uh, you could take it as Kylo Ren mm. telling her a lie. Um, that her parents are like I kind of briefly said that could be a possibility before we went into the see the film um, that she doesn't have parents essentially the parents don't matter and that's what he said he said that they were just junkers yeah. they were just on desert plant and they're buried on Jakku mm. but you could take that as a lie from Kylo I think to, it is. to kind of build it up more like I, as you know before we saw it I, I thought that Ray was going to be a Kenobi mm. um Anyway, from watching this movie, it has somewhat changed my opinion, and there was an awful brother sister vibe. Oh, a huge brother sister vibe, um, yeah, and I, I, I think it could possibly be that, and I think that that he was lying to her about thinking Jakku, about her parents being there and being nobodies. And another thing is in the first movie as well. There's a scene where the ship is flying away and she's screaming. At I know, her yeah, hands. that's what they thought about. And, and the junker guy is holding yeah, her yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Shut up, girl. Simon Pegg's character. Yeah. Um. So, but that and that makes no sense because the parents can't be dead if she remembers them flying away. No, absolutely. But uh, that's there. There are two things that I kind of thought about. I was got are thinking about when that when he kind of was telling that whether it's a lie or whether it's not. Um. Personally, if it's the truth, it's something that sits with me a lot better mm. than even her being a Skywalker, a Solo, or a Kenobi. Personally, I just think that it kind of gets rid of the weight that then that bears. Yeah. Her being one of those characters, she kind of has to hold up as something. Mm. The Her having just basically nobody parents kind of gives her a little more freedom to Absolutely. be her own character. Yeah. Um, as I said, like my dream and wish and hope and love, and while we were watching the movie, I was like, "Oh, this is weird enough that it might yeah, happen." Yeah, because I was thinking, that, I was like, "If it, I was like, if Palpatine I, I, appears, I I'm was standing up, stand I was going to stand up." I go, "Come on!" Yeah, because uh, kind of my want, most wanted her parentage is, and kind of still is, if it's up in the air. I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure. I'm fifty fifty about it now since seeing the movie. But uh, what I want and wanted and still want is her to be a Palpatine because I think that would be so out of left field and so unusual. And I'll tell you, th- there is a stronger possibility of it, right? Because well, definitely. She was in there in that thing. She put her hand to the glass and was like showing my parents. Yeah. And. It showed herself. Yeah. Which means that she might possibly be a clone. Possibly, yeah. But might still have his DNA. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Oh, the possibility. What a movie! It just opened up so much more possibilities in terms of where it could go because it is such an unbelievably strange, yeah. unbelievably fun, unbelievably comedic as well. Great fun, um, yeah. Unbelievably entertaining and just like on the edge of your seat action throughout the whole fucking thing. And there was two lightsaber battles. There was a perfect amount. It was the perfect amount. Perfect like amount. Two really good lightsaber battles and as well. One, like, and one... Actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah, just just two lights there, that was it. Um, without a doubt, MVP, um, Mark Hamill stole the show. Oh yeah, yeah, without without without, without a shadow of a doubt. But I suppose it's kind of like The Force Awakens as well, where that was very much so a Han Solo movie. That this was. was very much Luke's, you know, his spot in the limelight, and that's why the next movie it's like where what are they gonna do? Where are they yeah. gonna go? Like. The rebels are fucking destroyed, pretty much. The New Order has lost their fucking supreme leader. They now have Kylo Ren at the helm. Um, Huxley definitely does not like Kylo Ren. I could see there, yeah. there would be a bit of backstabbing yeah, going on maybe in the next movie, I'd say. Um, he was fantastic. Huxley was Donald brilliant. Leeson yeah, oh, was Donald Gleeson was brilliant. He, he was, for me, he was kind of coming in kind of close second or third for kind of Really yeah. good bad guy, like he was great. He was, you know, he's a sniveling, conniving yeah. bastard, but he also like has a intense hatred for fucking yeah. Jedi or Sith <laughs> rather, and 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 all that. And he really wants the new or the new order to do well. <laughs> order, order, <laughs> order. Um, yeah, no, he was brilliant as well. I thought in that role, it was good. Um, and he made it. He made. His character into something new. He wasn't just another Peter Cushing character. Yeah. Like he kind of was. In he seven. made it his own. He really did kind of bring something new to that. Um, one one nitpick I have uh, about the movie. What? Um, while Snoke was a fine character mm. and stuff, I thought that in this movie his CGI was terrible. It was weird. Very very mundane. Um, in fact, the hologram ones of him were better than the ones of him in the flesh. Mm. It, it it just. It looked like PS3 graphics. It was strange. It was more strange and unsettling for me rather than me thinking that it was necessarily bad. There was one or two points in the movie where the CG was quite bad, like when you know when they first uh, went up on the rock and Luke was teaching Ray about the Force and to asking mm. her to what to close her eyes and to reach yeah, out. Yeah. Um, when they came out on that platform. Mm. That was very bad CG, in my it opinion. Was great, yeah. And there are scenes, the scenes inside the exploding Snoke ship, yeah. were pretty bad CG yeah. as well. Like for a Star Wars movie, which has the biggest budget in the world, mm. kind of thing, it was. It should have been a little better or a little less mm. of the CG for those scenes. Now, um, in saying that as well, we are nitpicking, which literally just means we're looking for things yeah, to critique, just, just to give it, um, I suppose, a bit of balance, but. Overall, they, like I wanna, the there are things to be honest. There are things for me that I would look completely past. Oh, ex- exactly, yeah. I'm the exact same. Like for me, I was expecting to come out with a movie. I'm thinking maybe an eight out of ten, but I be honest, it's a solid maybe nine point five. Yeah, it was yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's, and it's it's the most definitely the most interesting of yeah. all the Star Wars films. Blue thus far. Blue Force Awakens out of the water, and that was great when it came out. Yeah. Um. I'm delighted. I'm really delighted. I can't believe. I, I can't believe. I can't wait for what. To, what's to What's to come next? Another fuck two years. Oh. Kill me now! Kill me now! So I don't have to see. <laughs> right. That is the end of love. That I is want the end of our discussion. Uh, uh, we're going to leave it on our two suggestions. My suggestion is go see it absolutely immediately if you haven't. I don't like. If you haven't seen it and you've stayed to the end of this spoiler fi- full fucking <laughs> podcast, you're a strange fish. But go fucking see that film as soon as possible. And go see it again as well. There, I'd mm. say there's so much to deconstruct from that. Absolutely. That you would have seen it. It's brilliant. Enjoy that's all. Fish. That's my last thing. I'm Jack. I'm Patrick. So thank you very much, guys. We'll see you. We'll, we'll do the outro one more time. Yo! M- Lovely. <laughs> all you gotta do is like, comment, and subscribe. Goodbye! No one, no one watches now It's the snake Looking at lovely things we have